Welcome everyone to Salem Lutheran Church. This is our live stream of the third Sunday of Advent. We're so glad you could join us, um, however you are, whether right on our YouTube page. Um, I'm just really happy of how far we've come. It's my great pleasure at this time to introduce our new pastor who's joining us in the ministry of Word and Sac Sacrament, Pastor Kirsten Nelson Rowenfeld. Everyone, let's give her a hand. Welcome, Pastor Kirsten. <laughs> It is good to be here with you today. Good morning and a blessed Advent to you. Um, I look forward to introducing myself more a little bit in my sermon today and in the future as we hopefully get together by Zoom or phone and get to chat and tell each other our stories. Everyone, we're going to start our worship service with um, the lighting of the Advent candle. This week is the third Sunday of Advent, so please uh, join us at home or wherever you are and also reminding yourself that the light is getting larger or brighter as we get closer to Christ's coming. Everyone, it's, uh, it's our pleasure, Pastor Kirsten and myself, this we're very happy to share with you uh, a third Sunday of Advent Litany. Hope is a candle that flickers yet offers warmth and life. The darkness will turn into light, the moon shine as bright as the sun. Hope is a hand that grasps and reaches out in peace. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard lie down with the kid. Hope is a song that grows and fills the world with joy. The wilderness and dry land will be glad, the desert rejoice and bloom. Hope is a promise of a baby to be born in a manger stall. A woman will bear a son and name him Emmanuel. The king shall come when morning and life triumphant brings when beauty gives the eastern wings and life to joy awakes not as a
and life and beauty he brings. Hail Christ the Lord, your people pray. Come quickly, King of Our reading today from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort those who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation, covered me with the robe of the righteous. As a bridegroom decks himself with a gar garland and a bride adorns herself with jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, as a garden causes what is sown to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had be, been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is my honor to be among you. Now, as your newest pastor at Salem Lutheran Church, I come to you bearing my traveling lantern and under my word and sacrament call, I attempt humbly to join John in testifying to the light. Do not despair. The light is coming. 
I am so grateful to Pastor Tim, to the call committee and council, and for your mutual discernment over these past many months. God's movement may seem slow to us at times, but God is persistent, persistent at revealing to us the way of the Lord, as John quotes from Isaiah today. God's way, the story God has written us into, is usually not easy to see until we look backwards. There it was, we say. There God was, weaving our stories together, small lights bobbing across divergent paths as they join into one that we might travel together here and now. I thank God for you, Salem, and for being open for, to God's persistent work of making a new story in us. A little about my story. I was raised in one of the stereotypical Minnesota upbringings, two siblings, parents who were music teachers and choral directors, Nelson, a gem of a Swede, and Peterson from the tradition of the Sad Danes, a cradle Lutheran with parents who learned the Bible um, their, from their own faithful parents, a Lutheran college, and a lifetime of church. I had the family history, or I have the family history of those American Girl Kirsten books. Do you remember those? I was only missing the blonde hair and braids. But when my turn came at age 14, I did get to play out the story of Santa Lucia myself, too, bringing in the light. As an adult, I became a pastor so I could walk with people on their discipleship journey, holding the light with them. With seekers and faithful alike, I love to hear your stories. Mine is such a small sliver of God's story, and yet it is still that, a story of how God has worked through me and my family's beauty and brokenness to bring me to this moment, just like your story. A story of how God has worked persistently to reveal God's light to me, even when I, like so many of us, chose blinders or preferred to sit in the corner of darkness rather than venture into God's exposing light. Your story is another small sliver of God's story. And God puts them together, our stories, and they begin to add up, becoming a light beam, then a beacon, and finally a floodlight shining through the night. And as I come to know you now as pastor and embrace my call among you, I look forward to testifying together to the multiplying light as we learn each other's stories. As my traveling lantern joins your candle and their flashlight and his headlamp, the light grows. The light grows as we learn each other's stories as individuals and families, as we share about the story of the east side of St. Cloud, where God has placed you and where God is working. And together, as we add to the story of a community moving into a fuller and deeper understanding, of being God's people now in the 21st century church with our neighbors, where we pray God will magnify all our little joined up lights into a beacon of hope for this community. This week is the darkest week of the year. This week, the darkest, the darkness may even press in on us, making the shortest days and getting shorter now until a week from tomorrow, from Monday. The lack of light seems deep and unending. The fears and worries and anxieties of our lives can be overwhelming when the days are short and the nights are long. The coronavirus, the economy, the threat of hunger and homelessness to our neighbors, not to mention all the other disease, loneliness, mental health and addiction being aggravated at this time. This may be the week when it is easiest to forget that the light is coming. So we tell each other stories, stories of light in the darkness, like a blazing campfire lighting up the faces of our friends. In fact, just yesterday, approaching this darkest week, you told the story of Santa Lucia for the community. Lucia's trust in God and her faithfulness to God's way made her into the patron Satan, saint of sight. Ooh, that's hard to get out of my mouth. Into the patron saint of sight. 
She illuminated the deepest darkness of the catacombs with the crown of light to feed persecuted Christians in hiding. She comes to testify to the light, to tell us, do not despair, the light is coming. And then today we tell the story of how John came to testify to the light, make straight the way of the Lord, John proclaims. And he shows up on the scene as a human with powerful sight for the light. He sees what's coming and he invites us to see it with him. And he tells us, do not despair. The light is coming. He is already here. This is Advent, when we tell these stories, waiting together in the darkness, readying ourselves, telling the holy story of those who testify to the light. The prelude, the anticipation that something bigger is about to happen. This is hope, even in the present darkness. We see things just begin to take shape, and we can just make out the movement in the darkness. It's the movement of the Holy Spirit. We need not despair. Remember, the light is coming. Nature itself this week could not help but tell the story. An aurora borealis was almost visible this last week here in Minnesota. And if you were in Canada, I guess it really was. Lights in the sky testifying that even in deep darkness, the light will not be snuffed out. Remember, the light that is coming has the power to transform, to change the entire darkness, bringing shimmer and heavenly beauty in our darkest nights. We need not be fearful in the dark. The dark sky is God's canvas just as much as the dawn. This too is a story of light. Also, there's a vaccine on the horizon. I'm sure you've heard. It will still take many months and we need to hold on tightly to storytelling in our present darkness. But our hardworking scientists are using their God-given gifts to find a way to co-create with God to keep us safe from this coronavirus. And journalists are working hard to use their gifts and tell us this story. They may not say it this way, but we know this is the story of God working through humanity to bring us this light. When someday we will be able to do what Christians and really all humans need to do, gather together. The day is coming soon when we will be able to see our way through to safely gathering as a community. Jesus' day is dawning. This light is coming. The darkness we are living in now will not last forever. Our vision may be troubled now. Our hurting world is groaning and we are still groping for hope. But even groping is an act of hope. Dawn is about to break. With the coming of the light, we will see our way forward and we will will be ready again to tell the stories to each other, the story of where we see God, the story of God working to bring us this incredible, ongoing, earth-shattering liberation, the story of God working through humanity wrapping God's self in skin like a present for you and me, the light itself wrapped in the form of a baby in a manger. The light is coming. I have heard that Salem has a strong tradition of testimony like this, like John's in today's holy story, of people sharing publicly how they see the light coming, stories of personal transformation, stories of how God is illuminating each of our lives in the light of the holy story found in the Bible. And I can't wait to get back to that time when we can gather again in person and I get to know all of your stories face to face. And in the meantime, I can't wait to get to know your story over Zoom and phone calls or email and other ways we can connect. For you know Salem, you know that God has given you a story to share. A story of how God's love and light change and challenge us by embracing us completely as we are and then leading us on the way to reflect God's light for others. 
This is the moment in which we live on this third Sunday of Advent, on the precipice of something big. The world is caught up in distraction and anxiety, and so we gather today across time and space to remember that we have a story, a holy story, a story we get to tell a little piece of one at a time. John's piece of the story was to invite us to make straight the way of the Lord, to prepare our hearts, minds, spirits, and bodies for God's story to take up residence within us, around us, and among us. To get ourselves ready to watch and wait, to listen and look for the ways that God is already here, as John says, And the ways that God surprises us over and over and over again, shining light in the darkness. So whether it's a small light of hope, a glaring light of exposure, a glowing light of warmth, whatever it is that we need right now, God is bringing the light bringing us once again the illuminating story of our lives, the story of Jesus. Even in this present darkness, do not despair, friends, but remember, the light is coming. Amen.
Everyone, we're blessed today, as Pastor Kirsten said, we gather across time and space as the people of God. And so one of the things the people of God do is that they, as an assembly, pray for each other, they pray for the world, and they pray for all those in need. Normally when we're gathered, we allow you some time to join us in those prayers. Um, and so I will do my best to um, lead us into thinking about some of the things going on in our world and in your lives. But Please do add your prayers as there's pauses, and uh, I look forward to just hearing your voice in person, but we'll do our best to collect our prayers from afar as well. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for revealing your light to us and for your servants who testify to the truth like John. We're thankful for Pastor Kirsten joining us today. We're thankful for all those that shared the light in the Santa Lucia Festival. We're thankful for your promise that you are with us in the midst of the darkness. Help us, O oh Lord, to be ready for your coming. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for every living thing. You announce in this year of your favor that you are going to heal this land and heal this creation. We thank you for the great marks of the night sky like the aurora borealis. We're thankful for all those that are willing to work in the evening hours. Strengthen our spirits, O oh Lord, as it is dark outside so early, and strengthen us to be a people who continue to walk into the light and walk with the light in the midst of the dark things all around. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O oh God of the nations, you plant your oaks. You plant us as oaks of righteousness in the midst of a broken world. Help us, O oh Lord, to care for each other and one another. Be present with the leaders of all nations and we say a prayer for the leaders of our nations. We're thankful for the land in which we live, which allows us to worship freely. Be with us, Lord, as a people, uh, as citizens and others in this country as we try to move forward together. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh God, you are the one who watches out for the wanderers, for the exiles. You repair what once was broken. We pray for a people who have been displaced from their homes by fire or flood, earthquake or storm. We say a prayer of thanks for all those agencies and people that work in difficult areas of the world. We say a blessing over Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response. Anyone and everyone that is working locally in our communities like the Salvation Army or Boys and Girls Club or all those that we are trying to support like Terebinth Refuge. Thank you, O oh God, for your promise that in those types of work, you literally reveal the light. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O oh God, you are the God also of the powerful and the helpless. You clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this place, this congregation, and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Lord, in your mercy. We say a special prayer today for those who are known publicly to desire our prayers or who are ill. We excessively say a prayer for Mark and Don, for Bernice and Mark, for Sandy and Bill, Joyce and Millie, for Sandy and Ginny, and others that we name in our hearts. O oh God, grant them your Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the spirit of peace, the spirit that comes along besides us to allow us to know your love. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of sinners and saints, you offer joy in the midst of grief. We're thankful for the beloved, imperfect people whose lives testify to your radiant love. We especially remember Santa Lucia, St. Lucy. 
and all those that have gone before us. Strengthen us and those who are mourning to walk in the place and into the light that you've given us until the day we see them again with you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. We trust this morning in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I would invite the congregation just to join me in the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I would like a special thank you for everyone that worked on Lucia. It was just an incredible event. Um, you may not know this, but if you click on, after our live feed, if you click on the video again, you'll be connected to our YouTube page, and you'll be able to see the Santa Lucia Festival um, right on our YouTube page. You can watch it, not at 7 a.m. when it's dark out, but at your leisure, and it's uh, great. Chuck Sell is in there. Uh, Santa Lucia is Taylor Gessner this this year, and then Ethan Stokel also gives a great testimony as um, St. Canute. And so after we were done with our festival on Saturday morning, we then had Lucia and others and Canute. They, we went around the neighborhood and brought cookies to the neighbors, um, really in the spirit of Lucia who brought light and food to the neighbors. Um, and so it was a great event. We also collected well over 120 toys that we will give to the Salvation Army to give out to a lot of their families. So a lot of thankfulness with that. Also, a thank you for Pastor Kirsten joining us. We're so glad you're here, Pastor Kirsten. And uh, we're just going to hear a moment of welcome again from her. So again, let's welcome Pastor Kirsten into our midst. Yay, Pastor Kirsten. <laughs> Briefly again, I'm not sure if Pastor Tim mentioned this at this service, because I know we said it a couple times at the first service, but I'm going to be um, working with all of you, and hopefully you can help me with this, but finding ways to get small groups together on Zoom so that we can meet and greet each other um, with smaller groups of people that way. We can have some more conversation. I am going to be putting a video introducing myself up on Facebook or some other places that it can go. And so I invite you when you see that to send me one back. My cell phone um, number is available through the church office here. So just call and Viv could give that to you. And then you can text me a video of yourself um, or somehow or email it to me um, here. My email is pastorkirsten at salemstcloud.org, right? Um, so, <laughs> so please do that because I would love to connect with you and as many of you as I can in this time and be sure to let your uh, church friends know or other people um, that we're starting this new gig and just want to get to know each other a little bit more as we build relationship. Anything I'm missing? All right. I sounds think we're good. Everyone, just uh, another note. As you might have realized, um, I'm standing in front of some plexiglass awesomeness right here. I'm not sure if you can see it on your video, but during a pandemic, church is kind of a challenge, right? And so this week, the council, the whole council is going to be discerning how we handle things like Christmas Eve, next week's service, and going forward. And so I would, I would ask your prayers because um, the numbers around St. Cloud, as far as the overall numbers, there's a lot of very high and so somehow we want to be church present on time and place we want to be church that's here we want to expand our ministry to you wherever you are at and so we are working through those things continually and so i would ask your prayers and invite your prayers for your leaders this tuesday we're going to have a communion event from 11 to 12 so if you'd like to come in and be person we'll do the words of institution and serve socially distant everyone and then if you're not able to feel comfortable coming inside the building understand um, just join us in the parking lot and we'll make sure um, that we will be serving you out there as well safely so thank you so much church for for where you are we're blessed today to um, be blessed on our way by pastor kirsten as she starts our ministry with us The creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love. The unexpected spirit guide your journey. 
now and forever. Amen. Amen.